In today's video, we are talking about an extremely popular Pokemon, and that is none other than Charizard. And we're going to be touching on 10 cards that I think any Charizard collector has to have in their collection. And we're also going to touch on the investability of these cards. And before we jump into the list, there's a pretty wide variety of Charizard cards, in my opinion. Um, this might differ from um, maybe some of the cards on your list. So let me know in the comments below um, what cards you would add to your list. But let's just jump straight into it. We're, we're just before you guys freak out, we're starting with a, an affordable card, okay? Just from an artwork perspective, I absolutely love this card. I know it's not very expensive, but um, if you if you like Charizard, this is kind of a must-have, in my opinion. Um, you know, we're it's not looking too hot right now. It's very affordable, like three bucks. Um, on the one-year chart, it's been as high as five something. Um, very common card, but artwork-wise, you know, come on, you gotta you gotta pick it up. Um, investability-wise, um, I do think there is room for this card to move up over time, but uh, this would not be, you know, the card that I would pick to see massive gains of long term. So not really uh, more collectability, less investability on the first Charizard. Now on this next card, um, we're going classic. We're going classic. Um, for me, obviously, I grew up um, in 1999 chasing the Charizard. Um, I was eight years old when the base set came out, so uh, holds a very high place. Um, in my heart for for the Charizard, not gonna lie. Um, we are on price charting for this one. I just wanted to. It just shows a little bit wider window. Um, it's been pretty consistent, obviously, besides these big run-ups here, like in the COVID um, times a little bit. But pretty much, you know, around two hundred twenty-five dollars ungraded. Um, if you are, if you love Charizard, you kind of have to go to the OG. Um, this isn't Shadowless first edition, but um, base set unlimited. If you want to have, you know, the OG Charizard, I think it's probably the best um, best way to go about it. And it is a lot more expensive than the first one, you know, 200 bucks. But um, long-term investability-wise, once again, probably better options. Um, just because there's so many of the these, and I don't think the vintage cards have quite so much room to grow. Um, not that they won't grow over time, but... I think if you're looking for there's better investments, but I think this is a huge collectability side. Um, if you don't have the base set Charizard and you're a Charizard fan, what are you doing? So I think that one kind of speaks for itself. Um, now we'll jump over to a little bit more modern here. Um, this, I, I, let me know if this is on your guys' list, but Champion's Path uh, Charizard here. I just like, I like this card a lot. I don't know. I don't know why in some ways it seems basic but for some reason i just like it i'm drawn to it so i do think that this is a uh great looking card and maybe maybe not on everyone's list so um just kind of stuck out to me but um on the one year chart here you can see you know we had a one year high of around 180 and now it's down to 160 so um and if we pull out to like it looks like we're kind of leveling out for the most part so uh, might be an interesting time to pick up this card. Um, Investment-wise, once again, I think more of the investment-heavy cards are coming at the end. Um, I'm, I personally wouldn't be betting too heavily on the Champion's Path Charizard, but um, so more from a collecting standpoint. If you if you're collecting Charizard, I think it's a cool different card to add to your collection. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of where it, where it's at. Um, yeah. Interesting card. Decent time to pick it up, but it's been it's been fairly consistent. Even the lows and the highs don't vary too terribly much. I mean, twenty dollars is quite a swing, but um, it's in that range. It's traded in that range, one sixty to one eighty. So, um, very consistent card there. Uh, next up, we're gonna go back in time to another vintage card. Now, this card, you guys might not be able to tell. This picture is probably not the biggest on here. I don't know if we can blow this up. Okay, there we go. Much better. So this is a lot higher quality. Um, so this Charizard, this is the Japanese CD promo, and for a collect, this is just a very very weak spot for me because if you guys aren't familiar, if you're newer, um, this artwork was the artwork on the Game Boy game, on the Pokemon Red, the original one, uh, in the U.S. So uh, that's why I love this artwork. Um, never came out in English, but uh, beautiful Japanese card. And it's another one where um, 
it's a little bit cheaper than the base set Charizard, around 180 bucks. It can vary. You can see sales here around ni like 93 to 300. It's just because the the quality. Um, you know, you can these cards get beat up. They're old, so um, a lot of heavily played, lightly played, near mint. So the the quality of the card is going to vary in the price dramatically. Um, so from an investability investability standpoint, it's very very uh stagnant so um not not super investable um long term i think but it's more of a collectability it's a very weak spot for myself so um i am actually going to japan the end of next month and i am not going to come back to the u.s unless i have this card in my possession so uh, that's going to be super fun to uh, purchase this card in japan so i'm really excited about that so um just, I absolutely love this artwork. Just for me, it has a very special spot. Um, next up, I don't really do a lot of rainbow cards, but we have the, um, something about this card really caught me um, when I was doing a little bit of research for this video. And the Reshiram and Charizard, this is from Unbroken Bonds. Um, I just, I really like the look of this card. I like I like how Charizard is. I like the Reshiram. Um, it's just great looking, I, like, I love it. Um, now this card, as you guys can see, it doesn't have a ton of sales, right? This is from Unbroken Bond, Sun and Moon era. In the past year, this is on TCG Player, only 38 sold, right? You like pull up the last month, one sold. So not the most popular card, but if you look at the one year chart here, um, it's come down It's come down a little bit off of that 143 mark down into the 120s. So not a bad time to buy. Um, on this card, I'm a little bit more mixed. It's a little bit more mixed for the collectability and vestability side. Um, I like it for both uh, long term. I think that um, this is a special looking card. It can perform well. And um, maybe it's a tiny bit less collectible from the aspect of it has Reshiram in it. If you're a Charizard collector, that is. But that's just my opinion. So maybe a little bit more on the investability side. Um, I could see this card performing well long term just because of what it is. Um, with the rainbow tag team it's pretty cool um, next up we're gonna do this is our last vintage card and if you guys don't like vintage I do apologize but I always have a soft spot for vintage um, Blaine's Charizard here great looking card um, absolutely love the pose that Charizard's in another weak spot for myself um, not a very expensive card compared to some of the the big dogs out there 144 bucks um, you guys can see this is this is why I like price charting. It's come down a little bit over time. You can see, and once again, the condition of the card, it's why these prices are all over the place. That's always the case with vintage. So, um, But you can see it kind of looks like we're on a little bit of an uptick, and then we're kind of a little bit on a down. So it's, But it's been fairly consistent. So um, big collection card, less of an investability card, um, unless, you know... It, to be noted for some of these older cards um if you're getting if you have like really high like i'm talking psa 9 psa 10 um slabs then that's going to change the investability aspect i think but it's, if you're talking for raw it's not really going to be there um these next cards are going to be the ones that i think you're going to want to be investing in they're the ones i'm investing in personally um for that aspect but um just had to give some shout out to blaine's charizard love it beautiful Beautiful card, special spot. Um, all the vintage ones, I'm just kind of saying the same thing. But um, next up, we have the uh, Paldean Fates Charizard. Um, Paldean Fates has been kind of a surprising set. It's been doing well. Uh, but what's interesting about this card is there's... Look at this. This is interesting. 2,200 sold on TCG Player. And if you look at the chart, obviously it came out hot out the gate. And it's held very steady around this price point. So even if you go like to the three month chart, it's actually on a little bit of an uptick. So I think that this card is going to perform well long term. I think um, there's there's room for this card to grow over time. And this card is starting more of the investable um, side of these Charizard cards, in my opinion. And I love the look of this card. I love the artwork. I love everything. Beautiful, stunning, stunning card. Um, the chart is saying not a bad time to buy. It's showing 
that uh, the market's accepting this price and it didn't really want it to dip below 100 and it's at that 113 113 range is kind of where the market's accepting it so um if you don't have this card interesting time to be picking it up so um yeah great looking card uh next up we got another modern card here this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone uh 151 extremely popular set great looking charizard right um the price on this card if you pull out on the one year it's very like it, while it has had its ups and downs it has been in this range where it it almost went down below 100 which is interesting but it's it's been between 100 and 130 and that 130 was last year like more at launch hasn't really gotten back up to those levels um we've seen 120s but pretty consistent little window um that it's been trading in i would say and we got eight and a half percent on the last month and seven percent or on the three months sorry and 7.2 percent on the last month um so a little bit of an uptick there uh this card i feel like is both investability and collectability because uh, people are going to be master setting 151 it's the most popular one right kind of a no-brainer uh but it had to make it on the list and where this card can go i don't I don't know. It's going to depend on print runs, how many copies are out there. Um, it is interesting to note if you were looking at the one year, 3,400 copies sold uh, on TCG Player. So it's not like there's a lack of them out there. It's just going to depend how many more come into the wild. Um, but you have to have this in your collection if you're serious about Charizard. And I think there is some investability. Uh, here it's just going to depend on how much they print it and they at the end of the day um, But yeah, I'd be I can't wait to see where this card ends up in a few years. It could be very interesting Next up um, This might be a little more controversial this one is probably mm, Less collectible more investable in my opinion because if you look at this chart over this past year It's pretty much bottomed out like I think they're for the most part, is only room to go up. I think Obsidian Flames is underrated. Um, whether If you think it's trash, that's totally valid and fine, and it could be a weak set. But I think that um, this card being a $40 card, it's not going to hold long-term. Um, we're seeing the boxes rise on Obsidi uh, Obsidian Flames, and I just think that this card is too undervalued, personally. I think that it's it's kind of only got room to grow. So that's just my take on it. So you guys can let me know in the comments if you disagree with that. Um, we are seeing a little bit of growth over the last month, you know, 8.2%, um, not a ton, but kind of bounced off that $40 mark and came back down and back up. So um, it's kind of been riding that wave. Um, doesn't want to dip below 40 though. So that's very interesting. We'll see here, did it dip below 40 at any point? Not really. Although it does show that it does show lowest sale was at 33 at some point, um, so that is interesting. But on the chart, it's not really it's showing the market price. Yeah, right there, 39, 30, 39. So it's it has dipped below 40. Um, but yeah, I I think it's kind of found its bottom, and I think it's I think it's too good of a looking of a card in my opinion. I think it just it might be a little bit more risky, but it has more potential upside possibly. Just my take on it. Um, then the last card, let's just get straight into it. I think, uh, I've touched on this card. I've been lots of videos. I just want to give it its props for, in my opinion, and might be a little bit controversial of a take best Charizard artwork we've ever gotten. You can agree or disagree. Let me know in the comments, <laughs> but, uh, fighting the Venusaur, absolutely love it. Stunning. Um, I think, uh, and it looks kind of like, you know, it had its run up round 200 and it's kind of hit its bottom at 124 i think that this card is too cheap way too cheap um and i think even though you know there's lots of copies out there lots of people are picking this card up but um currently i can under kind of understand where the price is at but once brilliant stars and some of these other um, lesser sword and shield the boxes start to come up in price i think the singles are going to follow and I just think it's just it's just too good of a card, in my opinion. This is, will be, I've said it in other videos too, this will be the hill that I die on. 
with Charizard. It's this card, okay? Um, of all of these cards, this is the one that I'm um, currently the most invested in, right? I'm not, um, I'm not trying to sell this card. I'm not trying to pump it up to sell. Um, check my eBay. I don't have this listed. <laughs> you won't see it listed, okay? Um, but I have multiple copies of this card for a reason. It's because it's the one I believe in the most. And yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I just think I think we're seeing the bottom currently. Um, it's above the old bottom, right? Um, and yeah, I, it's just too good of a card in my opinion, artwork wise. A little bit of a weaker set. I think that might be holding it back. Um, I do like Brilliant Stars as a set though, just just so you guys know. Um, but that. That's pretty much going to do it for this one, guys. I just wanted to do a little bit uh, different style of video, touching on specific Pokemon. Um, if you guys want me to do more like this, like just touching on um, Pokemon, specific Pokemon only, um, let me know, and I'll try and do that more. Um, it's kind of fun just to do uh, a little bit different style of video, break things up a little bit. Um, doing daily videos, it can be hard to find a topic sometimes, so um, it'll be nice, nice to do that. Um, maybe moving forward, we'll just jump around from Pokemon to Pokemon every every so often. Um, but yeah, that is going to do it for this one. Guys, if you're this far in the video, 16 minutes in, and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content, so do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and um, leave a comment. Let me know um, what cards I missed, what cards I hit on that, that you agreed with. Um, but I will catch you guys in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.